This webinar is all about telling your story, both through public speaking and through a whole other variety of means. But it's also about connecting with your values, the values at the core of you, because that's what your audience is going to associate with, it's what's going to resonate with them, it's what's going to help you build the relationships you need to make this project meaningful for you. This is the third in our series of webinars based around the book The Art of Shouting Quietly uh, and this one's entitled What's Your Platform? And by that I really mean where is the place that you feel most comfortable promoting your work and that, that may be online or it may be offline but it's really important to identify the places that you can be most effective. There are so many different networks and platforms out there, whether that's virtual platforms or, or real platforms out in the real world. You can't possibly use them all. There just aren't enough hours in the day uh, to do everything. And some people do try and do everything. They're on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and LinkedIn and, uh, and everything that's out there. Um, and I would say it's it's too much really and you can't possibly be good at all of them because not all of them will suit your way of working, they won't all suit your learning style. So it's really important to think about the ones where you can work effectively. So if we think about these platforms by looking at this diagram, um, some people are really good at giving talks some people are really good at running seminars or delivering workshops, uh, maybe on a more participatory basis. Some people are good on Facebook. It's an ideal show and tell medium. Others are good on Twitter. I'll explain more about that later on. Some network most effectively through LinkedIn or if you're a very visual person, you may find Pinterest is, is a great way to work. Other folks are natural writers and, and creating books or ebooks or webinars or video courses is the way to go for them um, because those things are really accessible you do them once and then they're up there online or they're for sale in the bookshop um, and folk can continue to access those for a very long time and it's so easy now to turn a word document into a kindle file or into an ibooks file that absolutely anyone can publish a book these days and indeed you can you know anything more than 45 pages long really um, you can put up on Kindle. So that's interesting. Some people love working creatively online but on platforms that they're in control of like blogging, creating a lovely website, working with YouTube or Vimeo, or SoundCloud or Mixcloud, the, the, the audio only platforms. And if that's the way that you work, the thing that you find really attractive, the place that you can shine, then maybe, you know, that should be your focus. And blogging is a phenomenal way to communicate with people. Blogs tend to show up really well in Google search results. And it's a fab way of diarizing your experience and, and laying it out. Um, over time so people can keep coming back and checking what you're up to. Some folk are really good at face-to-face -face stuff in small groups or one-to-one -one, uh, and those are the folk that tend to favour networking meetings or one-to-one -one meetings, lunchtime meetings, coffee, meeting people for coffee. Um, folk like that generally enjoy doing pitches or doing working lunches and if you're good at that one-to-one -one stuff, then that's really good. Maybe you're a natural connector and that's important. But again, I would emphasize that not everybody can do all of these things well. And it's interesting, isn't it? Maybe by looking at this slide, you're already gravitating towards some areas that really interest you. Maybe you do have an ambition to write a book. Maybe for you it's... It's not about perpetually updating your Facebook status. You want something that has a real legacy to it. Or maybe you've got an ambition to go and do a TED talk and, and you need to get some practice in and, and go and do a TEDx event or a similar speaking event. 
to get some practice with that. So you need to find the platforms where you can shine and really focus on those. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that. Maybe you're one of these folk that's a natural born thought leader. There's lots of definitions of thought leadership out there, but basically it means this. A thought leader notices things that are important to their niche. They bookmark them and then they share them through their media, social media outlets. They may share them on Twitter or on Facebook or on Instagram. And over time, they become a repository of knowledge around that theme, a repository of knowledge for that niche. And people begin to gravitate towards those thought leaders because they'll know that they'll regularly get information about something that's important to them by visiting those links. And it's actually one of the easiest ways for somebody to set themselves up as a go-to person for a particular topic. So if that appeals to you, that could in fact, that single thing could in fact replace the scary thing about doing public speaking for you. Just a thought. So if you're new to a platform, say Twitter or Facebook, and you're not sure what to do, I would suggest that you join. You look at other people's followers and the people that they are following, and you see from their list which of those might be worth you following, and you follow some of those. And then simply observe. Do nothing for a while. I mean, by that I mean, I don't just mean 24 hours, maybe nothing for a week other than just watching what all the people that you're now following are actually doing. Watch how they tweet. Watch what they tweet. Watch the links that they put up there. But above all, watch how often the stuff is retweeted or shared or liked or favorited. Because those posts that are shared a lot will give you clues as to how to construct a really successful post. Notice the things that are being shared. Notice how those posts are being put together. And then and only then would I suggest to you that you begin to share stuff yourself. So find people who are already successfully communicating with an audience that's similar to yours and observe what they do, watch it over time, and pick out and emulate. Now, by that, I don't mean simply copy. I mean, create your own version of the things that seem most effective. So find the platforms and networks that work best with your learning style, the ones that feel most natural to you, because it's easier for you to shine when something feels natural to you. And it may be that if you're a strongly visual person, then visual sites like Facebook and Instagram uh, may appeal to you. If, if you're more of a doer, if you're a kinesthetic person, then one of the video platforms or audio platforms might well be the best place for you. And if you're an auditory person, if you like text and words and reading things, then maybe blogging or podcasting might be the thing that floats your boat. But think about your learning style. What are you drawn towards drawing or speaking or listening or getting involved with stuff? And then pick the platforms that allow you to do that, to really get involved in those ways. But you must remember that your audience also have different learning styles too. You know, they're looking at things, they're wanting a mix of different ways of learning about stuff. So whatever you do, you need to work out how you can communicate in ways that use or combine words and sound and visuals and something interactive. Video is great. It ticks almost all of those boxes. Although on some of the posts, some of the most successful posts that I've done, I've created quizzes or inter interactive exercises and posted those up so people can download and interact with them. But it's about balancing the need for you to do something that appeals to you with things that will appeal to your audience. And, and finding the overlap in there is, is really, it's a rich seam if you can do it. Keep your posts simple, whether that's a 140 Twitter 
character or post or whether it's a 400 word blog post keep it simple use a good image or maybe a very short video always have an intriguing headline because that's what draws people in and always have a link back to your main website or blog and if you're on Twitter or Instagram make sure you use the hashtag because those are searchable terms and folk that are looking for your niche your interest group, your audience that are sharing your audience with you will be using those appropriate hashtags. So do some research, find out what the hashtags are that apply to your niche and begin using them yourself. Don't invent random hashtags um, unless you've got a lot of influence or, or a huge audience that are likely to pick it up. Um, it's very rare for those things to go viral on their own. <coughs> but you never know. Now in terms of thinking about your platform, here's a really interesting thought experiment. I feel that we get drawn towards the internet. It becomes a habit and we forget about all the stuff that goes on outside or off the internet. What if the internet didn't exist? How would you communicate with your audience? What techniques would you use? It might be worth just flicking back to the platform image. Think about which ones of those are not online techniques. Because some of those offline techniques are really actually the most powerful things for creating relationships. For the first eight years that I was in business, the internet didn't exist. Email didn't exist. I had to do everything offline. I had to write people letters. I, had, I wanted to send out flyers. I had to address all of the envelopes and stick the flyers in and stick a stamp on each one and go down to the post box. And I often wonder what would have happened to my business if that had simply been the way that thing carried on. And I, you know, I, th I think I would still have a successful business. I would just have communicated with people in a different way. And who knows, I may have ended up with even more successful connections than I have now, having been seduced by the internet. But you look at successful people, and successful people are generally connectors. They connect with people not just online, but in real time, in real places too. All of your communication should be about creating and maintaining meaningful relationships with the people that matter. And if one of your activities, whether that's marketing or self-promotional activities, isn't really doing this, I would question why you're spending time on it. You need to focus. There's too little time available already. You need to focus on the things that really work. So by all means, try things out. But if they don't seem to be working for you, Give it a good go, but then drop it in favour of something that is really working for you. And maybe come back to the other thing later on. But it's the connections that you need. It's the relationships that you need. Make those in whichever way you can. So here's the assignment uh, around finding your platform. There's a number of things to think about here. Um, first of all, read the book, The Art of Shouting Quietly, Chapter Age page 97 and look at the diagram on page 132 can you draw a mind map that shows your favoured ways of communicating so here's the diagram now yours will be different this is mine yours will be different so get a blank sheet of paper uh, put me in the middle that's you uh, and then think about the things that appeal first of all now for me I enjoy talking to people and I tend to talk about my inspiration I talk about my work, I talk about themes that are of interest to me. I also love running workshops, I like doing that show and tell activity, but I also love running master classes, so I work with masters levels and PhD level students um, running master classes, but I like doing that in a participatory way where they're in the room with me and we're working on something tangible together. For me that's a really powerful shared learning experience. I also enjoy writing, uh, as you'll have noticed, I've written a couple of books uh, and I enjoy blogging um, and writing those longer articles and in fact it's the blog that creates the material for the book over time 
you know, a, a number of successful vlog posts then feed into a legacy material like a Kindle or an ebook or a print book. But that writing experience is also important to me because it feeds my social media activity and a lot of the social media activity that I have links back to the books or to the blogs or whatever. So I use thought leadership, sharing links and an idea, sharing images and an idea and a link that then links people back. They follow the trail of breadcrumbs back to the central things that I want them to look at. So that that's a real part of your assignment here is to create that mind map and think really carefully about the platforms that really suit you and not just that what you're going to use them for because the last thing you want to be doing is posting ideas randomly. There needs to be a common core, there needs to be a plan for your social media activity. At the end of every instalment, um, I'd like to encourage you to complete this personal action plan. The rules for the plan are, are very, very simple. Um, once you've done your thinking, break the action down into bite-sized chunks, uh, small steps that you can take easily. Um, jot down each individual piece of action to be taken. Set yourself a target for the date by which you'd like to have it done uh, and make some notes about how you're going to do it and who can help you along the way. Um, keep a hold of these action plans. You're able to download this pro forma each time you need to use it uh, and over time you'll build up a record of all of your goals and targets and how well you've moved towards achieving them.